After years of waiting for it, Affinity Publisher on the iPad is finally here. My name's Tim Wilson and I would like to take you through it so you can see for yourself what you think. Let's have a look at all the features because it's so similar to the desktop version, you won't believe it. So this is what Affinity Publisher looks like when you first go into it. What we have on the left hand side is right at the top, we've got live documents and you can see I've got a document there which is a live one. I'll show you that shortly. Under that is the new button for creating new documents to open existing documents below that and then templates and samples underneath those. And then finally we've got help down the bottom here and there's a pretty good help system in here if you get lost with anything. But let's go in and do a new document. I'll click on new over there and this is pretty good. This is pretty much like the desktop version where you have presets on the left, you have the dimensions after that so you can choose a preset then change your dimensions and then to the right hand side we have then got facing pages. We can switch that on and off. Who'd have thought you'd be able to work on a facing page document on an iPad? And then the number of pages, obviously we can change that and we can put in new pages later. The color, is this going to be RGB, CMYK, grayscale, etc. And down to the color profile over here and you can choose the color profile you're working on. Now you'll notice that my color format was CMYK or gray in there. Whereas if I went along to some of the other settings, some of the other preset settings um, in here, I'll then find that I've got RGB as my default setting. I'm going to go over back to the uh, press ready preset, just choose a five in there. Now before we leave this little area, you'll notice that we can also go to marks and bleeds. We can put in sorry, margins and bleeds. We can put down our margins in there. We can put in our bleed down the bottom. And I'll just click OK. And this will then open up that document. Now, if I zoom right out, you can see it's set up exactly as you'd expect the desktop version to be set up. On the left hand side, we've got some tools and that's pretty much exactly as we've got on the desktop version. On the right hand side, we've got some panels or studio panels as they're called. And this includes things like your color and your stroke. So that's fill and stroke in there. We've got our layers. Layers are quite important in uh, Publish on the iPad. And then down to our pages here. So I can actually navigate through the document by going to a specific page. Now we also, believe it or not, have master pages. Up the top here where it says pages, if I click onto that, I've got some master pages in there. We can add new master pages in there. We can work with multiple master pages. Moving further down, I've got some text options over there, asset options, stock. You can get stuff from Pixabay and Pexels. Some effects in here and down to transform options, history, the navigator. Personally, I don't use that much, but hey, it's up to you. Onto the resources manager. We don't have any resources in there at the moment. And this is amazing. We've actually got a live pre-flight option on the iPad. So this will just check your document as you go along. I'm going to open up another document for you shortly and you'll see that um, uh, we can have a little green tick or a cross through that depending on what things are correct or not. Along the top, we've got some more drop downs. So we've got some selection options there to select things like the same object or the same path or curves. Moving to the left of that, we can select under things, select inside. We have our pathfinder or Boolean operations as they're also called. Alignment options, flipping options and some rotation in there as well and then moving things to the front or to the back. Over here we've got a few more options. You can see um, over here for hide selections and enable transform options in there, amongst others. And then at last we've got two more little menus along the top. The first one gives us some little quick buttons into areas. 
So for example, we've got a quick button to go and insert behind. Or over here, there's a convert text to frame option. And lastly, we've got a drop down menu over here, which then gives us a lot of the options that you'd normally have save, save a copy. Once again, this is really awesome. You can actually package your document up as well. Now let's have a look at this on an actual document. So I'll just go into this one here. By the way, this entire document I created very, very quickly in Publisher on the iPad just to see if I could do it. And all of these items come from Publisher on the iPad. So there are tables in there that we can use. We have got master pages. We can actually go in and this little icon here I created not in Publisher but in Designer because when you click at the top, you can just jump between Publisher, Designer and Photo. So if you want to do something very quickly and you're working on a document, you just click on Designer in there. It takes you and it shows you the Designer tools and you can work on your document with Designer's tools and the panels. If, for example, I wanted to edit a picture. So let's take this one over here, for example. I could click on the photo app and then go into photos and I could change that to something else. Let's say for example I went into my um, adjustments here and I want to make that image black and white and I can then adjust some of the settings like you would in photo. Just go back and forwards between those three different pieces of software. Now let's have a look at a few other options in here. I'm just going to go back to the right hand side and have a look at the pages panel because in here you can see this is where we have our master pages so I can click in there and I've just set up two master pages over here there's a blank one and this master page in there so the idea is that it's very quick to work on your document and as you're working along this document here I could just go to a page, go to my master and say, well, actually, I want to use this master page here on that part of the of the document. And you can just drag and drop them straight in like that. Change my mind. I'm going to drag it from this one once again and drop it onto the document. So you can set up multiple masters in there. Don't forget when you click on certain items, not only does it take you into the area, but it jumps you, in this case, into the master page over there. We still have more little options along the top, and I can then go and edit my whole document, selected masters, or selected spreads in here, and do a lot of changes to my document. So, is this a full-blown, full-fat version of the desktop? Well, everything that I've seen so far seems to point that way. I've done a number of things in, in here that I do on the desktop normally. For example, over here, this is a table of contents, which is a live table of contents. I've got my page numbering in there. Once again, like I do on the desktop, as I said, we can do full tables in here. And then when it comes to exporting, we'll be able to export it out or package it as well. Now, I did mention before that there was a live pre-flight option and you can see this little red plus in there. If I click on that, it's telling me any issues that I've got on my document over here. So I have misscaled something. There's a misspelling mistake in there as well as a few other bits and pieces. For example, if I were to change some of the text over here and um, I've got some text missing, once again, that will appear over here saying overflow text frame on page number four, which is what it's on. Lastly, top right hand corner, but the little windscreen wiper on the right, this allows you to preview your document and you can just switch the preview on and off. And it allows you to preview with a number of different things in here, as well as having some guide settings that you can get to that way. But I really like this because I can just flick between my two settings over there and see my document as it will print out. The button at the top right hand corner just hides all of your panels for easier working access.
you can just use three fingers to drag down and it opens up an area here which gives you lots of little options and one of them is the delete option. There's also cut, copy and paste. The one I want to tell you about actually is this little option here. It's the little button. When you click on that, you can drag this little button around. But the important thing you'll see is that when I click and drag on that button, it gives me shortcuts to what otherwise I would struggle to, to get to because I don't have a keyboard attached. So you have kind of things like Shift and Command and Alt. And to get to them, you all you have to do, let's just get rid of that again, is you click once on there and then click and drag and you can choose the one that you want. If you click and drag upwards with one of them, it will hold it switched on. So this means that if, for example, I want to copy something very quickly, so I'm going to just take the word adventure and I want to copy it a few times, I can just click on there, go over to my Alt, that's the one at the bottom, and I can just drag copies down very quickly. But while I'm dragging this, I also want to use the Shift key. So I just drag up to Shift, and now it will constrain the movement as well. Let's just have a look at that again. So if I take this little ampersand, I click on there, go down to the Alt option. I can then start to drag that to make a copy, and then go up to Shift, and it will hold it and constrain it to 45 degrees in there. This is by far my favorite feature. I think it works really, really well with the software. So what did you think? Is it as good as you thought it was going to be? I was so impressed with it. Having all of those features which we normally get on the desktop on an iPad is amazing. If you'd like to learn more about Publisher on the iPad, have a look at our links below. We've got some special deals for both Udemy and Skillshare. And of course, we've got other courses as well from the Affinity and the Adobe range. Do have a look. I'm sure you'll find something which you really, really enjoy. Mm -hmm.